All right, g'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. In, in today's video, I'm gonna be taking a look at who are the 10 breakout players from the 2020 AFL season. Now, just to clarify, there are obviously going to be more than 10 players across the league who have enjoyed a breakout season, and I might not even get the 10 right, but I'm gonna nominate 10 players who, to me, have made an impression this season. And further to that, I'm not even really gonna name them in order as such. I'm just gonna nominate 10 players who I think have taken their games to the next level this season. As I always say, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe and let's get into the top 10. Now the first player I'll nominate is probably the most obvious and significant in my opinion, Melbourne's Christian Petraka, who was obviously picked two in the 2014 season, famously taken after Pat McCartan. And at the moment that is looking like a shocking call from St Kilda's perspective. This was the year the D's really needed Petraka to step up and start to realize his potential. And as far as I'm concerned, he started to do just that. He enjoyed a pretty good back end to 2019 from memory, but this year he's been a consistent performer and enjoyed a full-time move to the midfield. He's averaging 24 possessions and a goal a game from obviously limited game time. One of his best performance that comes to mind was a 29 possession performance against the Hawks, which included a monstrous 14 score involvements. And just last week, he enjoyed four goals to help Melbourne get over the line against St. Kilda in what was like a mini final really for their season. Shane Crawford describes him as probably the best player in the game at the moment. I wouldn't go that far but he is definitely a Brownlow Smokey this year. Next up, we've got Gold Coast's Hugh Greenwood, a new recruit who was pushed out of that Adelaide side for allegedly being not young enough or not fast enough to make their squad going forward. And the irony is he's become a really good, big bodied, consistent inside midfielder for the Gold Coast Suns, something that Adelaide could really use right now. As it currently stands, he leads the league in tackles, he's second in contested possessions, and he's fourth in clearances, which is really not bad bad for a bargain basement pickup. The term money ball pickup really does get overused in football, but this is probably a classic example of just that. Next up, we've got Western Bulldogs halfback flanker, Bailey Williams. Now, Bailey Williams might not be a household name just yet, but there's no doubt he is one of the most improved players across the AFL this year. Champion data also supports that. Allegedly, he has gone up by 190% in performance this year, which surpasses that of any other player. He's rated elite for meters gained, and he's also rated the ninth best kick in the AFL. Now, from what I can gather internally from all accounts at the Bulldogs, he arrived at preseason in the shape of his life after previously being maybe a little bit overweight going into preseason campaigns. But he came in, was fit and ready to go, and it's translating on the field. He's gone from what was previously a fringe player at the Bulldogs to now an absolute core contributor in that back line. Next up, we have St. Kilda's Dan Butler. And like Hugh Greenwood previously, this guy could easily lay claim to being the best recruit through the offseason last year. Now, Butler was a player who was a little bit skeptical about making his transition to St. Kilda because I wondered if he was best suited to Richmond's manic pressure style. I feel like he's tailor-made for it. And I was skeptical he could play to a similar level at St. Kilda, but in fact, he's actually improved as that really defensive, frenetic small forward. The Saints really needed to add pace to their list last year and that they did with he and amongst the other recruits they've made, but he's the best tackler inside 50 this season and he's also top five in the Coleman, having an absolutely elite year. In terms of what St. Kilda actually gave up for him, he's definitely one of the best pickups throughout last year. Next up, I'd like to nominate North Melbourne's Jai Simkin. Now at the start of the year, I did highlight North Melbourne's need for their youth to really step up and take it to the next level. They've got an aging sort of list with a bit of youth cropping through. They've probably a little bit, up to this point, previously been over-reliant on their sort of older experienced stars. And someone like Jai Simkin, who was pick 11 in 2016, this was the year he started, needed to start making a transition to being the player that he has the potential to be. In a team that is playing far worse than last year and probably playing below their actual potential as well, Simpkins added four disposals a game in obviously reduced game time as well. And he's top 10 in the league for score involvements. He's fast, he's skillful, he's a potentially elite talent. 
and it's great to see he's taking his game to the next level in 2020. Next, I've got a potentially controversial one, another St. Kilda player in Jack Steele, and it's only controversial because he was already a pretty good player last season. I think he ended up leading the league in tackles just over Elliot Yo, if I'm not mistaken. So he's been consistently good for a while, but this year, I think he's taken his game to the next level. So much so that playing as a defensive midfielder, I think he's actually a contender for the All-Australian midfield spot, and that's not something you often say about defensive midfielders. Now, it's not too often that a defensive midfielder will have a match-winning performance. Steele's best performance this year was in round five against the Blues, where he completely shut out Paddy Cripps and had 29 possessions and nine tackles to himself. And he, along with Dan Butler, have been huge reasons in St. Kilda's uprising up the ladder this season. My next nomination is a former number one pick by the name of Jacob Wiedering for Carlton. Now the trajectory of Wiedering's career has been interesting. He started on a high, then had the second year blues where he was unfairly maligned as far as I'm concerned. And now he stepped up to being a near on, maybe not elite level quite yet key defensive prospect. But if he's not there now, it won't be long before he is there. Most key backs up until this age would have had the same responsibility that Jacob Wiedering has had at Carlton. He's been exposed against some really good and experienced key forwards across the league. But you can really start to see the gap between these experienced, powerfully built forwards and Wiedering really start to level out. Now it's hard to make the case statistically for Wiedering obviously because he's a key defender. But as far as I'm concerned, he'll be very close to pushing that all Australian squad at the end of the year. This is just the beginning for Wiedering. And as far as I'm concerned, he is possibly the best of the next wave of key backs across the league. Next up, we have a fellow number one pick from the following year, Andrew McGrath from the Essendon Footy Club. Now, McGrath obviously won the Rising Star Award in his first season, but the improvement after that has been a little bit more incremental and slow and steady since then. In 2020 though, I'm pleased to say he has definitely taken his game to the next level as a core contributor in that midfield for Essendon week in, week out, averaging 23 possessions. And his best performance of the year came a couple of weeks ago in a match-winning performance against the Hawks, where his side came from behind and he had 32 possessions. As I've said previously, obviously we're playing with shorter quarters this season, but he's actually averaging two more possessions, he's impacting more, and he's actually doubled his tackle count from last year. Next up is another high draft pick from the Fremantle Football Club. This time, it's Andrew Brayshaw. Now, obviously Brayshaw was a former pick two and another example of a midfielder who's had a lot of responsibility put on his shoulders at a young age. Now, as we know, Fremantle have sort of bled mature talent out of that midfield. In particular, I'm looking at Lockie Neal over the last few years and Fife's been injured. So Brayshaw's had to spend a lot of time in the guts. It's been a tough apprenticeship. He hasn't had the same protection as maybe some other young gun mids at other clubs, but we are starting to see the fruits of that development. In short and quarters, he's lifted his game average of disposals from 16 to 20, and there's been a number of occasions where he's probably been Fremantle's best player on the field. Most notable for Brayshaw, you can see he's getting a lot stronger through the core and through the hips, and he's been able to shrug off tackles and not getting pushed to the ground quite as much anymore, and I think that's actually been quite an underrated benefit of his this season. Along with Chera and Sarong, he's gonna be a huge integral part of Fremantle's next finals push in the next couple of years. Last but not least, we've got another Essendon player. I'm gonna nominate George. Ridley. Now, after being picked 22 in 2016, Ridley had a fairly slow start to try and integrate into that Essendon backline. He played just nine games up until the start of this year. Now he sits well and truly entrenched in that Essendon back six. And while he was previously a no-namer, he's starting to make a name for himself and he currently ranks top 10 in marks, contested marks and rebound 50s across the league. So there you go, guys. That is 10 players I've nominated as the most improved players this season. Undoubtedly, I've missed one or two, probably more than that. So as always, I welcome your contributions in the comments. Let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with, and maybe a player that I've missed I would like to hear from you. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.